This is a post-apocalyptic world after a zombie virus outbreak. All sources of energy have ceased to function. The exhalation of the zombie, however, has become the new energy on which mankind depends for survival. What to do if you run low on fuel on the road? Don't be nervous at this point. First, offer a delicious steak to the zombie. If the zombie refuses to eat, it means it is already useless. What you need to do is abandon it and find another nearby zombie to put into the fuel tank. After putting a mask on the zombie, the car is once again filled with power. This method not only costs nothing, but it is also very environmentally friendly. By utilizing these zombies, everyone can live a comfortable life without being as troubled as they are now. And Reese has taken full advantage of the functionality of the zombies. When he returns home, he first treats himself to a barbecue. It remains to be seen how the meat cooked with the zombies' bad breath tastes. But judging by his eating manner, it should be quite good. After finishing the meal, it's necessary to wash hands. Reese takes out a bucket of steaks from the fridge and hangs it in front of the zombie. The zombie can see the steaks but can't eat them, which frustrates it. Indirectly, it provides a continuous power supply to the water pump. This way, Reese not only can wash his hands but also water the vegetables. Shortly afterwards, Reese checked the generator and found that one of the zombies was slacking off and refusing to eat the meat. In this case, it had to be killed, and then another strong and young zombie was grabbed from the metal cage to take its place. Reese is an extremely disciplined person, he often uses zombies to practice his skills when he has free time. The zombies forced to operate also cooperated by taking a few punches. After all, they didn't want to be fired. After the workout, Reese started his day's work. He first threw the stake outside, waiting for the surrounding zombies to be lured away. And then he drove out in his modified pickup truck to prevent zombies from rushing into his house. He naturally had to lock the door. Then Reese arrived at an empty field, quietly waiting for his prey to take the bait. However, this time he wasn't capturing zombies, but living, breathing humans. Soon after, an unfortunate and unlucky man comes into his sights. Without hesitation, Reese fired a shot, seeing that the person still had some breath left. Reese used a high-pressure air gun to stun him. Then he drove to a secret base, handing over the captured survivor to the military. Because Reese himself was an asymptomatic carrier, and the existing pills could only suppress but not completely eradicate the virus, the military needed survivors to research methods to treat the virus. In order to save this world ravaged by zombies, Reese had no choice but to capture these survivors. Despite his guilty conscience, not only did the military take half of Reese's fuel, but they also assigned him a new mission to capture the people in the photos. Meanwhile, a car stopped on the grassland, and the person inside was precisely Reese's target. Suddenly, a shell came flying towards them and the car was instantly overturned. The bewildered woman was still in a daze. When she saw a car approaching not far away, the person was none other than Reese. Meanwhile, the sister had fallen into a coma. Reese, fully armed, approached slowly. Suddenly, a hand grenade flew towards him. Leading Reese dumbfounded on the spot, Grace rushed out, wielding a baseball bat, and unleashed a furious assault on Reese. Seeing that it had no effect, she pulled out a handgun, but it couldn't penetrate his defenses at all. When the last bullet was fired, Reese launched a counterattack in an instant. He then took out an air gun. And that's how Reese captured one of his mission targets. Little did he know, there was another one in the trunk, Maxie, who had been unconscious finally woke up. While the younger sister had already been captured, Reese is on his way to the base with Grace. When suddenly, Grace launched a surprise attack. With a deadly scissor kick, she subdued Reese. But at a critical moment, Grace underwent a mutation. Reese prepared to take her out with a gunshot. But Grace's survival instinct was strong. She quickly took out an unknown potion from her pocket and consumed it, which halted her mutation. It turned out she was a hybrid, part human and part zombie, for finding a cure. She was undoubtedly the best test subject. Reese knocked her out once again and brought her to the research base. After completing the handover, the military put two barrels in Reese's car and instructed him to deliver them to a nearby pharmaceutical factory. Reese wanted to know more about the process of developing a cure, but the colonel outright refused him and told him to focus on his assigned tasks. Reese could only shake his head helplessly, then followed the orders to deliver the goods to the pharmaceutical factory. A doctor specialized in pharmaceuticals came out from inside. Without saying much, 
only handing Reese a green box to take back to the base. Reese checked the time. It was time to finish work, so he hurried back home before sunset. But outside the walls, zombies had already surrounded it. Reese used the stakes to lure them away and took the opportunity to drive into the enclosure. Back inside the house, Reese opened the green box. To his surprise, it was filled with virus suppressant pills. However, at that moment, an air gun was aimed at Reese. The next morning, Maxie asked Reese to take her to find her sister, or else she would end up like this wooden board. Under Maxie's threat, Reese could only comply, but Maxie acted recklessly after all, because this car was Reese's pride and joy. To deal with various uncertainties, it naturally had many traps inside. As Maxie was about to climb up, confused, she was hit by a shot from the airgun, and that's how Maxie was also taken to the research base. Witnessing the soldiers' rough actions, Reese asked them to be gentler, but the soldiers didn't care. They even said that they would all end up in barrels anyway. Hearing those words, Reese instantly lost his composure. He questioned the soldiers about what they meant. Wasn't it agreed not to harm their lives? The colonel wanted to use the same old excuses to urge Reese to leave quickly, but Reese no longer trusted them. He turned around and took out the air gun from the car. After quickly dealing with the soldiers, he escaped with Maxi. But how could the military just let them go? It didn't take long for them to catch up. At the critical moment Maxi ejected herself, but Reese was in a dire situation. The soldiers caught Reese and hung him from a tree. Then they left him there to fend for himself. Reese surrounded by zombies, snarling and lunging towards him, with the zombies only inches away. Reese had no choice but to lift his legs with all his strength. Although he had been disciplined before, but he couldn't hold on for more than a few minutes. Coupled with the foul breath of the zombies, Reese couldn't open his eyes. Under the combined attack of physical and magical forces, Reese finally gave up resistance, but in the moment he lowered his legs, the zombies suddenly stand still, with his feet just 0.01 centimeters away from the zombies' stinking mouths. Reese looked ahead in confusion. It turned out that Maxie had brought the first zombie queen to rescue them. The zombie queen had a special ability to control zombies. If you haven't seen it, click on my homepage. The powerful aura made Reese faint instantly. When he woke up, he found himself tied to a chair. If it weren't for Reese saving Maxie's life, he would have long met his demise. Barry revealed the truth about the military laboratory to Reese, saying that on the surface, they were developing a cure, but in reality, they were using the guise of research to take lives, and the queen had escaped from the experiment. At this point, Reese had only two choices, either join them or become a buffet for the zombies. Even a fool would know what to choose. And so, Reese joined the queen's team. On one hand, he was truly afraid of death. On the other hand, he wanted to personally confirm what the military was researching. They were preparing to attack the pharmaceutical factory for the queen with her special abilities. It was a piece of cake. She controlled the zombies, easily dealing with the guards at the entrance. And then, together with the zombies, they stormed inside. Although Reese had been cooperating with the military for a long time, this was his first time entering the facility's interior. The scene before him completely dumbfounded him. It turned out that their so-called research involved injecting antiviral serum into the bodies of survivors and then turning them into pills that suppress the virus. Looking at the pills and the remaining skeleton nearby, Reese was completely devastated. He took out his handgun and killed the pharmaceutical doctor. These survivors were the ones Reese personally brought in. Although he didn't kill them with his own hands, they died because of him. So Reese decided to lead the group in destroying the research facility as a way to make amends for his mistakes. Meanwhile, the facility's PhD and Colonel were preparing to extract blood from Grace. When they suddenly saw Reese and the others appear on the surveillance cameras, the PhD thought Reese had captured the zombie queen, so he ordered the soldiers to go out and assist them. Little did they know, they had already sent the zombies into the facility through the fuel port. Before the group could react, the queen controlled the zombies and initiated a self-destructive attack. With a loud explosion, everyone immediately opened fire. It must be said, these few zombies were really dedicated. The entrance was cleared of soldiers. Maxi immediately infiltrated through the fuel port. While the remaining three entered through the main entrance, Reese opened a door, preparing to enter the laboratory. Unexpectedly, the iron door suddenly closed automatically. The queen was trapped inside. It turned out to be a trap set by the PhD. He created a terrifying zombie killing machine, 
specifically designed to deal with infected individuals with special abilities. Without the assistance of the zombies, the queen instantly fell into a disadvantage. Just as she was about to die, the doctor's hand suddenly became uncontrollable. It turns out his right hand was infected by the zombie virus. And behind him, Grace also awakened her special ability. She took control of the doctor's right hand. Grace continued to use her ability to make the doctor madly attack himself while the zombie machine on the other side mimicked the same actions. Although they didn't know what was happening, it was the perfect opportunity to fight back. The queen took a metal rod and killed the zombie machine. Meanwhile, the PhD endures Grace's control and used a high-voltage electric shock to stun Grace. When the group arrived at the PhD's laboratory, they found that the PhD had taken Grace away and activated the self-destruct sequence of the base. There was less than 30 seconds left until the explosion, the laboratory door was locked. The escape route could only accommodate two people, the Queen and Barry left the chance of survival to Reese and Maxi. Meanwhile, the PhD brought Grace to Reese home, because only he had the equipment to transfer blood. By inputting Grace's blood, the PhD would gain special abilities. When Reese and Maxi arrived there, they found Grace on the verge of death. The PhD, who had turned into a monster, suddenly appeared behind Reese, catching him off guard. Maxi was also locked in an iron cage. Reese was no match for the PhD at this point. No matter how much he attacked, he couldn't cause any harm. With a single punch, the PhD knocked Reese down to the ground, followed by a one-sided beatdown, but in the end, the PhD couldn't escape the fate of the villain dying from talking too much. A steel pipe pierced through his heart, leaving him lifeless. It turns out that Grace woke up and killed the PhD. Grace rescued her sister. Everything seemed to be over, but Reese still couldn't forgive himself. Just as he was about to pull the trigger, Grace stopped him in time. Rather than dying in such a pathetic manner, it would be better to join them in rescuing more survivors. And in the final scene of the movie, Barry and the zombie queen also emerged from the research facility.